Hello everyone, welcome to Saturday Night Football here in Mitchelton. We have the first semi-final of South East Queensland Gridiron. It is the Stingrays and the Rhinos for a spot in this year's Sun Bowl next weekend in Holland Park, just south of Brisbane City. My name's Sam, I'm without my co-commentator Mark tonight. Hello Mark if you're watching overseas. But I will take over the reins for tonight, calling the juniors game earlier. But now we have our headline act, the major, or the, the second semi-final. So these two teams met last week um, down in the, uh, at the Gold Coast. And speaking to coach Levi Sturgis, he said that it was a good test for them before the finals. But he also said it was unfortunate. They know that what we could do. Another big point from this uh, from that game was that Riley Woods was at Riley Wood was ejected, but he is back for tonight. He is not dis uh, he's not suspended. He will be playing tonight. And then for the uh, for the uh, for the Stingrays, Jaden O'Rourke is good to go after a ankle sprain, which kept him out of last week's game. So we'll set up for the kickoff now. Captain's out there. And it looks as though the Rays will receive the football. Exciting matchup this is uh, this game is. These two teams met here a few weeks ago, week six, where the Rays absolutely pummeled them in the second half with 45 unanswered points to win that game, 21 to 66. But last week the Rhinos found out that they can beat this Rays side, 26 to 16. That down at the Gold Coast. That was a good test for both sides, not just the Rhinos, but for both sides going into this game. Bit of a preview, but now this is the real thing. This is where things start to really, really warm up in this, in this season. And then next week, the Sun Bowl. And the winner of this game will, f will go up against the winner of the Bayside Ravens and the Morton Bay Raptors, who are playing down at, the goal, uh, at Carina, down in Bayside. That game is also on Calling All Sports. Make sure you give them a subscription. They've been live streaming all of uh, Gridiron Queensland uh, games this season. So Tom Fenwick is back to kick this week. Levi Sturgis said that he may be somewhat limited but will be in kicking duties for tonight. So let's get underway. Rhinos, Rays, Mitchelton. Exciting matchup. Let's see what the night has in store for us. And a good deep kick there by Fenwick. And that's Gab Salvo to return it. Good hard return here by Salvo and he's hit hard there. That was a good tackle there by Donovan Fave. And now comes Taj Borden with his offense who have been absolutely on fire this season. And they are with O'Rourke tonight. He is on the sideline at the moment. But Taj Borden recently voted the MVP by Osgrin Iron Focus. Make sure you also give them a follow on Instagram. They do some amazing work with statistics and, and analysis on the league. So let's see the first play of the semi-final. It's a pass play. Borden escapes the pocket and he'll slide just, uh, just inside the, just outside the 30. 35 yard line. Good pressure there on the inside of the defense, uh, inside of the line there from the Rhinos. But on the outside is where they really shine. That is Jack Lowe, number 43, and the American Xavier Huey at number five. He has really shone through as he, after he was moved from outside linebacker to the defensive line, he has been an absolute star for the Rhinos this season since that move. Here's Borden. Hand off outside of McCalmont. And he goes up inside and he is stuffed down at the 35 yard line. That is a great show of pressure there. That is Jordan Scanlon in their number 94 for the Rhinos. He's one of the most important pieces on the defensive line for the men in red. And that sets up a third and medium for this Rays offense. Major and Hull out on this near sideline. Saul Bembe defending Major. Shotgun for Borden. Drops back. Rolls out to his right. Looks downfield. He's got Mage. He's got Hull. And it is just overthrown. Shem James and Sawabembe there in coverage on number four for the for the Stingrays. 
and the Rays are going to have to punt it out here. One of the big points in the, in the game here a few weeks ago was the Rhinos' defense in the first half. They had a very, very good showing, but then, of course, in the second half, that's when the Rays really hit their stride and were able to put up 45 unanswered. The Rhinos will definitely be looking to not allow that to happen again. You'll see number 12 out there, Makana Garrigan, due to a couple injuries for the Rhinos. He will be playing tonight, number 12. Their defensive coordinator for the season is out there. So here's the punt. Oh, and that's a bit of a shank, and it will be bouncing just inside the line, and then it will eventually go out. So the Rhinos will have possession at around the 34-yard line, and now comes Mitch Bradford and his offense. I see Riley Wood there, as I said, he is playing this game, will not be suspended. That is a big, big talking point for this Rhinos team. He needs to be out there for them. Max Williams in there as well. There was some doubt that he might be limited tonight, but he is out there for the first snap. Let's see how, how much he is involved in this game. Carlos Manos, the Portuguese import, to the left of Bradford. Williams in motion. Good block on the inside, and Wood right up the gut, and he's eventually brought down there. That was Josh, Ma Josh Malkapin and Trevor Telfer on the tackle there for the Rays. And that moves the chains for the Rhinos. First down. It's the same setup here. Schlatter somewhat back in the backfield here. Just off the right shoulder of the tackle. Mardos Mar motions. Wood to the outside. Gets the edge. Tries to get it back upfield. A lot of Rays there in the vicinity. And he's only going to get about two there. Good defensive pressure there from the Rays getting out to Wood. And in comes Tom Hansen. It's great to see him back after a few years over in Kansas. Playing for Washburn University, a Division II school. Tore his Achilles just, before, just as he got over there. But now he's back with the Rhinos. Spoke to him earlier today and he said it feels like he's back home and rediscovered his love for the game playing back out on the field tonight. This this is his second game. Three three catches for 33 yards last week and he is out there for, the first, for, for his first snap for tonight. Schlatter in motion. And there's Hansen. Tall receiver. Great grab and he slips over down just at the 40, at the 33 yard line. 36 yard line that is, sorry. Same line up here for the Rhinos. Schlatter in the slot. Bradford. Hand off to... Oh, no, it's a pitch outside of Manos. Manos has got the edge. Goes back upfield. And he's brought down there on a good tackle. That was number 28 there. Lucas Orfrank, the linebacker for the St Gold Coast Stingrays. Out comes Riley Wood. Also just want to make a, a note. We are missing... Um, wide receiver for the Rhinos, Henry France. He's currently in hospital, but the Rhinos would like me to mention him tonight. Um, They're they are definitely thinking of you, Henry. Hopefully you're all good soon. And enjoy your team out here playing. Here's Bradford. Shotgun. And a good ball over the top. He's looking for Hansen. And there is flags flying as well. Pass interference there. So Tom Hansen there drawing the penalties. That will move the chance for the Rhinos up to the 15 of the Stingrays. Inside the red zone now for the Brisbane Rhinos. So Tom Hansen will stay out here on the near sideline. Slider in the slot. 
Stingray sideline trying to get them upbeat. Slatter in motion. Fake the jet sweep. Bradford uses his legs, looking for the outside, and he'll have to go out of bounds. Fumbled just before he went out too. Bradford is a very effective runner. Averages nine yards on every carry that he has had so far this season. Very good with his legs, even after that foot injury that kept him out of the majority of last year. So it'll be second and six, second and four, sorry. Just outside, Stingray's 10. Bunch formation to the far sideline. Here's Bradford, handoff inside for Matos. Matos trying to dodge, and he's eventually brought down maybe just inside the 10. So in comes Riley Wood. As I said last week, disqualified for unsportsmanlike conduct against the Rays down, down at the Gold Coast, but he's back tonight, despite a bit of a cloud over whether he would be allowed to play. Motioned out. And a good ball over the top for Max Williams. He breaks one tackle, he breaks another. Max Williams is in for the touchdown, and that is a brilliant play to open up this Rhino's first drive. And Max Williams, despite a fact, despite a potential injury cloud over him, he is in for the Rhinos' first score of the night and the first score for the entire game. Broke a few tackles, falling off the legs, and then was just able to push his way in. Maybe a bit of a pull there by Jacob Estev as the right tackle to, to just get him in there, but great running there for Max Williams, number 85. And Tom Fenwick will have a kick for the extra point. So Fenwick, he is good. So 7-0 lead here for the Rhinos. That is the start that they were 100% looking for. And that gives them great confidence going to the rest of this game. We'll make the point, that is what happened last time when they were here. Rhinos were the first to score. And then the Rays came back at them. So let's see if the Rhinos cannot let that happen again and get a bit of a lead going here. So back to receivers, Gab Salvo, number 20. He returned the kickoff last time. Very explosive runner as he caught that ball. So let's see if he has a repeat of that, that running style. So Tom Fenwick on the kickoff after the Rhinos touchdown. And it's a good kick into the corner of the field. And Salvo will return it. That hard running style again. Here's Salvo. Oh, and he's hit hard there by number 36 for the Rhinos. That is Jara Fulamolo. But out comes the Rhinos defense now. And let's see if Taj Borden can put together a little bit more of a complete drive than last. No O'Rourke as of yet. I'd love to see Vernon McCalmont get a few opportunities here. He's an ex explosive runner. One of my favorite players in this league to watch. One of the most exciting. So here's Borden on first and 10. It is to McCalmont and he is brought down. Well, the Rhino's there. Great defensive pressure. And Jordan Scanlon all over that as well. That's a big play from number 94. Brings up second and 13. Trips formation out to the right now. Major and whole part of that. Borden drops back, pressured, runs. This is what he does best, and he slides down at the 35 at the 25 yard line for a pickup of about seven. Great running there from Borden, sensing the pressure coming up the middle, 
Oh, coming up from the outside, goes up the middle, uses his legs. One of the most effective running quarterbacks in this league. So it's third and seven. Borden looking at McCann Garrigan. And a sidearm pass is full short of the feet. There of number 19, Dale, Dylan Napier. So that brings up four, uh, fourth, and, fourth and four. And the Rays will have to come out and punt again. That is two consecutive three and that is two consecutive three and outs for the Rhinos defense. They will be very, very pleased with that. So speaking to coach Levi Sturgis, he was very adamant that even without the possibility of having Riley Woods tonight, they were going to be still running the football and he wants to show his offensive genius in this game. Some of the, the trick plays and the different packages that they run, he wanted to still stay with that same mentality. And as I speak, there is a big play here for the Rays, but it is snuffed out by McCona Garrigan. Big play there by number 12, defensive coordinator for the Rhinos. And the Rhinos are going to have incredible field position to start this drive. They opted not to punt. for the f They went for the fake punt instead. And the Rhinos will start inside the race 30. Riley Wood, the lone man in the backfield. Motions it up. Here's Bradford. Hand off to Wood. Good block on the outside there by Glasson. Wood to the outside. Scampering, scampering. Here goes Wood, Wood, Wood to the end zone. Dives to the pylon and he is in for the Rhinos touchdown. But there might be a holding penalty and there is not. What a play by Wood. And speaking to him a few weeks ago, he loves the name Riley Roadrunner. And he is showing all of that running ability in that play. What a play from Riley Wood. Getting to the outside, diving for the pylon. Elite athleticism from number one for the Rhinos. And they will have the chance to go up by 14 here with the Fenwick kick coming up. And Fenwick's kick is up, and it is good. So the Rhinos will have a 14-point lead, and that is exactly what they needed to have. They could not go down in this game. They could not let the Rays get on top of them. They have to be the team to lead the most first, and that is what they are doing here. Now Taj Borden will have a third opportunity now. Has to capitalize on that opportunity. So the kickoff now for Fenwick. It's a line drive. And Salvo lets it run past him. It goes all the way down to the three yard line and he returns it anyway. Here goes Salvo. And he is brought down at around about the 16 yard line. So he did very well. He had to get down there, get the ball up from the ground. But he did a very, very good job of returning that. Only about a four yard loss on a potential, potential touchback. So here's Borden's opportunity. League MVP, let's see what he can do. And a good ball there. That's number 21, Bailey Myers. First completion for Taj Borden. Gets this drive underway, moves the change. First down for the Rays.
Taj Borden now up over 1,700 yards on the season. Here's McCalmont. And he'll be brought down for a gain of about four. Darby Martin's in there, number 28. Leading tackles in this Rhinos team along with Xavier Huey up 14. Now we can see some rhythm starting to mount up here for the for the Stingrays. Important period of the game. Need to put together a good drive and get back into this. Here's Borden. Drops back. Pressure from Scanlon. Gets away from him. And a throw over the middle, and Shem James could have gone for that, but risky play there from Borden. Didn't want to take it out for a bit of a loss. Instead, tries to get it downfield to a receiver, but he's unable to do so. And that brings up third and six. Quite an important moment in the, in the game this is. Third and medium, let's see what Borden has up his, up his sleeve. Borden drops back. Gets through his progression, goes right, and it goes for Matt Major, and the ball is incomplete, and the pass is incomplete. Shim James there, and great coverage on Matt Major. And they will have to punt it away again. This Rhinos defense is really coming into their own for the second half of the season, and that's off the back of the amazing efforts of Xavier Huey. He has had a great he has a great back end of this season. Fourteen tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles. Statistics that really help a defense win, and so far tonight they are winning against this Rays offense. And the punt is away and lands around 30-yard line. And Makana Garrigan, I believe that was, got down to the punter. And that's Kane Mackin, who also plays as the defensive lineman for the Rays. Seems a little shaken up after that, but he is able to walk off the field without any medical assistance. In fact, it is a first down for the Rays. That is a big, big moment there for them. Big call. And the Rays are able to keep their offense out on the field. I wasn't able to hear the refs call. But they will stay out there. On fact, sorry, no, it is a, a replay of the punt. It will just be moved up a few yards because of the, of the penalty. And there will be now a timeout on the Rhinos. So a little bit of a confusion both out on the field and also up in the box. Sorry for that one, folks. We don't have access to a ref's mic, so I am going off what, they, what I see from them out on the field and also if I can hear them from down on the field. But at the moment, it is a punt opportunity here for the Stingrays after they were able to move forward just before the first down marker. But the Rhinos will be keeping their D line, uh, the, defensive, uh, the defensive unit on just in case there is a bit of trickery from the Rays like there was on their previous successful punt attempt. And in fact, they will be keeping their offense out there for a potential fourth down opportunity. Rhino's getting their defense amped up here. Borden drops back, needs an option, and is batted away by Chiam James. Standout safety for the Rhinos and in this league. And Borden is un unable to convert, convert on fourth down, fourth down. And the Rhinos will have the opportunity just inside the Stingrays half. 
Great coverage there. McCona Garrigan on lower hole and Chiam James there. And that was on Bailey Myers. So here come the Rhinos offense again. Their defense has been a massive standout tonight so far. Let's see if the offense can capitalize on, on that last opportunity. Here comes Christian Denton, defensive MVP in the league by Oles Grinnell and Focus. And Mitch Bradford, his pass to Max Schneider is incomplete. So that will bring up second and ten. So Hanson and Schlatter are on this near side. Taylor and Williams on the far. And it is a handoff to the inside for Riley Wood and he is eventually brought down. And that was Josh Malkapine. And that looks to be a first down for the Rhinos and it is. First and 10 from the Stingrays 25. Here's Bradford to pitch out to Riley Wood. And Wood breaks a tackle, gets up the middle of a few, and he is eventually dumped down there by number 28, Lucas Orfrank, the linebacker. And that is Kane Macken, who will receive some medical attention. So after a short break, we will resume play. It is second and about two from the Stingrays 26. Oh no, sorry, from the Stingrays 16. Nice cool night here in Mitchelton. Had a mostly overcast day with a few pockets of sunshine, but now we've got the sun setting over the mountains around Sanford here in southwest Br North Brisbane. Bradford checks it down to Wood and Wood looking upfield, breaks to the outside and Riley Wood goes in, his second touchdown of the evening. And the Rhinos will incre increase their lead for to 20 with the opportunity to make it 21. Riley Wood, two touchdowns on the evening. Great play, Jukes, fake Juke the, the inside and goes up the outside. Looking for that pylon again, using the space. Incredibly, incredibly agile runner. And Tom Fenwick now with the opportunity to make it 21. And the hold is good, the kick is good. And it is a one-point conversion. So the Rhinos, 21-0. That is a great scoreline to have. And we are still in the first quarter here in Mitchelton. For a spot in the semi-final. In the, in the Sun Bowl and looking over to the other game the Ravens have a 21-0 lead also over the Morton Bay Raptors down in Logan so currently we look like looks like we have two teams already with one foot in the Sun Bowl but still a lot of time in both of those games anything could happen but so far 
two good scores for two very good teams. And Gab Salvo with a little bobble, but he's able to re re return it. And he has hit hard there by number 36 again. That is Jara Fuamoli. Two very big plays there on kick return defense. Tom Fenwick, number 14. Looks like he is mainly on kicking duty tonight. He's caused some issues for, for the Stingrays on kickoff returns. So he seems just as valuable to this team as any. The Rhino sidelines seem very, very happy with what they've seen so far from their team. The Rays seem a little depleted out on that far sideline. Haven't seen anything from Jaden O'Rourke. Maybe they're just saving him a little bit. And that is the end of the first quarter. We will have a, a flip of the field. So to recap the quarter, the Rhinos able to hold the Rays defense to three consecutive three and outs on all three of the Ray, Rays drives and capitalizing on their own offensive drives with three touchdowns. Two to Wood, one to Max Williams to open, us, to open up the scoring here in Mitchelton. It is 21-0 to the home side for a spot in the Sun Bowl against either Bayside Ravens or the Morden Bay Raptors. Make sure to check out that game as well. Also on the Calling All Sports YouTube channel. So Braden Quinn here in the slot for the Rays. Noah Hull out here on this near sideline. And just a little bit of a discussion down here on the field between some of the referees. Looks like we're close to getting the second quarter underway. Taj Borden with an opportunity here. In the normal shotgun position he usually sits in. Here's Borden, drops back, steps up, and he is going to be taken down. That is a great defensive effort there from the Rhinos. And in there was Xavier Huey along with Jordan Scanlon. Those two on the defensive line have been excellent tonight and all season as well. Just looking at Xavier Huey pre-snap and he looks like he was about to burst out of burst out of a cannon there to get to Taj Borden number five going up against number five there. And the one in red is the beneficiary. Brandon Quinn, the lone receiver on this near sideline. Here's Borden. And the handoff here is for Gab Salvo. Who looks to take over? Who looks like he might have taken over a little bit of the duties of James Taylor, number 23, who in this very unique Rays offense, in the run game especially, is more of the punch man, so that Vernon McCalmont can be more of the eccentric runner and the, and uh, get those larger yardage yard plays. So Gab Salvo looks like he might get a little bit more work here tonight. He's out there again in the backfield spread offense here. For the Stingrays, Borden drops back. And an opportunity here for Jeremy Cowles. He is back from injury as well. He had an excellent opening to the season before he was injured. He's kept him out for a, for a good chunk of the year. So fourth down here for the Rays. They are going to have to punt it away again. So the Rhinos have been able to keep the Rays on non-penalized drives to three and outs on all of them. That is a great effort from this Rhinos defense. They will have to maintain that for all the majority of the night if they are to win this game. And so far on the scoreboard, they in the school on the scoreboard, they're in a very good position to do so. So here's the punt from Mackin. It's a good solid end over end. It's going to be taken by Schlatter. Cuts inside, trying to get to the outside. He's eventually going to be brought down by number 90, Louis Baris who's also one of the defensive standouts in this league. So the Rhinos are going to have possession 
from around about their 41 yard line. And here comes Mitch Bradford once again. One interesting thing I will say is Max Williams has been the main receiver for the Rhinos this season. He is currently on 19 receptions and counting. So let's see how much Tom Hansen takes over from that role. See if they spread out the workload a little bit more over both 85 and 89. Tom, ha Tom Hansen obviously bringing that Div 2 experience out from Kansas. Here's Bradford now. Looks to his left. He's going to get it out to Matos, but it's a little bit in front of the Portuguese import. So that will bring up second down off of that incompletion. One of the things I'll note about Bradford is his passing completion percentage isn't the best, but it's it, the efficiency of the passes he makes. He has good yards per attempt on the season. He averages 14 on each pass attempt, which is, which is a great number for any quarterback to have. So Maddox in the backfield for the Rhinos. Here's Bradford. A screen ball out to Lockie Taylor. Cuts inside. Here goes Taylor to the outside. He might have the he might have a touchdown here. Taylor gets inside, and that is a touchdown. There's a fumble in the end zone, but was he down? Yes, he was in the end zone anyway. Touchdown, Rhinos. What a cut inside of Josh Malkopin, number 27. And the Rhinos have the chance to go out to 28-0 just into, into the second quarter. What a play by Lockie Tail on the screen pass. <laughs> and just as I said, Mitch Bradford, not many completions, but efficient completions. That one going for almost 40 yards plus. So Tompkins with the hold. And easy work for Fenwick. Four from four on the night for the man with the AFL background. And as I said in the juniors game, you have players coming from other sports and you try to utilize their skills within this sport. Tom Fenwick, one of those types of players, AFL pedigree, Brings that kicking ability. You use them on punts and kickoffs and kick and and kick attempts, and you will reap the rewards. So back again to receive is Gab Salvo. And out there also is Bailey Myers, number twenty-one. So here is Tom Fenwick, and it's a good kickoff, and that will be a touchback. That is a great kickoff from Tom Fenwick. So the Rhinos' defense will start will start their defense from the 20-yard line, but this is where Borden really has to show why he's the league MVP. But it is not helping that the Rhinos are playing some of their best defensive football of the year. So here's Borden, and there's a completion to Major. He breaks a tackle, and Matt Major is brought down, but not before he's able to make the first down. Good tackle breaking yards after the catch there by number 11. He's now up over 450, uh, around about 450 yards on the season, and he's averaging 21 yards per catch. Yak, yak, yak for Matt Major. Seven touchdowns for him as well. He did have three touchdowns here in that in that 66 to 21 route, if I do recall. So let's see if they use him a little bit more, if they can get some offensive Mike going. 
And here's Borden going for Major. What a catch by Matt Major. That is a big play in the Rhino sideline. Are calling for a taunting call, but they will not get it. And Matt Major, that is a big, big play there. What a throw by Borden. He has one of the best deep passes in this league. So Gab Salver in the backfield. Seems like he's taking a lot of the workload for the for the Sting race tonight. Borden will go up the middle. And good aggression from the, from the Rhinos defense. And that is a pickup of around about five for the for Taj Borden, who has been forced to run a little bit tonight. Pressure from the outside. Xavier Huey in there, Jack Lowe as well. Vernon McCalmont in now, now in, in the backfield for Gab Salvo. Around about second and four. Here's Borden. Drops back, looks out to his right. He's got Major. And he is unable to haul in and Bailey Toddle on the coverage there. And Bailey Toddle, one of the best cover corners in this league, able to stay with his man there. Coming out on the field now is Trey Thormoli, number 47. McCalmont retains his position in the backfield. Quinn, Hull, Myers, and Major, the receivers. Borden, looking, pushed out to the right, and a good catch. That's Matt Major there, and that is a first down for the for the Gold Coast Stingrays. So a big conversion there, keeps this drive going, and a good opportunity to get back into the game here. They need to put points on the board here. Massive opportunity here for the Stingrays. Here's Borden. He's going to fire it out to the sideline and he's unable to haul it, haul it in. That was Matt Major out on that far sideline. And he's going to go fence hopping there to go get the football, which has gone into one of the practice fields on that far sideline. And back over he hops. So one thing I'll note from this game so far is the importance of Jordan Scanlon on the inside. Doesn't let Borden run up the inside and then Huey doesn't let him run on the outside. So that is big for the Rhinos. Speaking about the inside, there was Darby Martins and, he's br and Taj Borden is eventually brought down by Trey Fuller Molly. And the little run inside is only about a gain of two. So this Stingrays line needs to s just sharpen up a little bit. They're getting too, uh, allowing too much pressure from the Rhinos. This four-man front is working an absolute treat for them. One of the most important parts of this Rhinos defense is that defensive line. Here's Borden. Fires it to Major, and he is able to haul it in. Had to come back a little bit for it, but he was able to pick up around about six. And it will be fourth down, but I would assume this will be worth going for it. And it looks as though they will stay out for this. They do have a designated kicker. That, that is Ailey Myers. But they trust Borden, and so they should. Big fourth down here. They need a conversion or a touchdown. Borden drops back. 
has to run and he is swallowed up. Xavier Huey take a bow. The American import, what a tackle from Xavier Huey. Not a chance for Borden and the Rhinos will bring out their offense. Right off the edge. Just a little miscommunication and assignments there from, from the Stingrays O-line. Left Taj Borden, no chance. So they'll go with this two-man backfield for the Rhinos. Wood and Matos. I think one of the best moves that the Rhinos made this year was bringing in Matos. Allows Riley Wood to do more by playing less. Allows him to have these big yardage runs but not burn too much energy on smaller plays. But he's tripped up there. And now we're seeing the impact of this Rays defensive line. Louis Barisi, one of the better defensive linemen in this league. They do have one of the best defensive lines in the league. Ryan Newton, Louis Barisi, Sam Holloway. 17 sacks, 27 tackles, 11 for, for losses, and five forced fumbles on the season for those names. Here's Bradford. And he's going to be stuffed. So some good defensive pressure now for the Rays. They seem to just find their mojo a little bit now. Tristan Denton was in, in all of that. And now it's third and about 13 for the Rhinos. Bit of ground to cover up in their own red zone. So third and long now. Trips right formation for the Rhinos. And it's a big play to Hanson. Oh, did he pull it in? No, he was unable to. He's right in the bread basket for Tom Hanson. He's unable to haul it in. That was Josh Malkapine on the coverage. He did lose his man. And Josh Hanson is unable to, to haul this ball in. What a big pass that is from from Bradford right on the money from number nine but now they're going to have to punt it away and that will be Tom Fenwick's first opportunity for the night They were missing a man on the field there. The Rhinos say they will be brought back five yards for a delay of game. Levi Sturgis not too happy there with Kai Kerr, number 11, one of the younger players in this unit. So here's Fenwick. There's that AFL pedigree. Great line drive kick. A little bit of an end over end. And that's a good return attempt here. And then... Absolutely smashed to the ground there. That was Bailey Myers brought down again by Jara Fulamoli. He's had some great special play, special team plays tonight for the Rhinos. And there is a man down here. Looks to be the cornerback, Donovan Fave.
So Ofcom's done, Ofcom's five, a uh, fave. Was able to get off under his own power. So maybe not the worst concern here for the Rhinos cornerback. Already had to bring in the defensive coordinator, Makana Garrigan, into that position. So they are a little slim in their cornerback room. So he would be a big loss in terms of personnel numbers. Here's Borden. Has to be, is hurried out to his right. Scanlon is all over that. And Jordan Scanlon, one of his, one of his big stat lines is his quarterback pressures. He is all over the quarterback as soon as he gets through the line. A very, very quick defensive lineman. And especially for such a big guy, that is a massive, massive point. So McCalmon is in the backfield now. He's retained that position for a little while. And here's Taj Borden. Steps to the pocket. That is a good pass fired over. That's number 19, Dylan Napier. And a small pick up there of a maybe about five or six. And that will bring up about third and eight. In fact, it's third and seven now from the Stingrays, 38, 37. Borden in the shotgun, as always. Takes it. Steps up, fires. And it is incomplete. Chiam James a little late to his man there, but able to get the pressure on him just as he made the attempted catch. That was Bailey Myers once again. But Cham James continuing his very, very solid season here into the playoffs. Borden has, as I said, one of the better deep passes in the league. But Cham James is all over that. And now, in a, in a recurring fashion here, the Stingrays are going to have to punt it away. Max Schlatter back, back to receive off Kane Mackin's kick. A little low. Good, solid punt there for Macken. Goes into the corner. Schlatter will have time to return. Looks to get to the outside. Breaks a couple tackles. Gets a solid block on Barisi. Here is Schlatter looking for the outside, and he's just going to go out of the out of the field of play. And Jara for Moly and, fat, uh, and flags fly all over the field. There was a big hit from number 36, Jara for Moly. But a great return there by Max Schlatter. He shows a lot of speed. He's one of the sp speedy receivers that this Rhinos offense has. But on kick returns, he is a great asset. A bit of a blindside block there from Jarafu Moli. Good hit for the entertainment per um, part of this game, but in terms of the rule book, it is a penalty. So part of that kick return will be negated. The Rhinos will be, will be brought back a few yards. Good to see some Gold Coast Stingrays fans and family travel up to, travel up to the north side of Brisbane. It is a bit of a trek, but it is good to see some traveling support to make a good atmosphere here in the northern suburbs of Brisbane. So the Rhinos have brought back a considerable amount, seems like, to about their 13. So a big task here for Mitch Bradford. It is first and 10 inside their red zone. Matos is back there with Bradford. Bradford takes it. Looking out, perfect timing to Taylor, but maybe just slightly off. Number 13 is unable to bring it in. So we are at the two minute warning for the first half. So now it'll be interesting to see if the Rhinos are able to go into 
maybe a high tempo offense. Or will they not be able to get some, some good movement downfield? And will they take us to the half? Or will they go for this? Let's see how the Rays defense fares. Hansen on this near sideline. Wood motioned out, swing ball, and Riley Wood looks like he fumbled that ball a little bit up into the f up into his path, then hauled it in, and then he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage for a substantial loss of around about five. In fact, it looks to be about third and 14 here for the Rhinos. So a big task here for Bradford in his offense. Josh Malkapine back at free safety. Here's Bradford. He'll have to run. He's trying to extend the passing opportunity. Oh, and Max Williams, was he able to haul that in? And it looks as though he's been able to. What a catch there by Max Williams. Let's look at this once again. Mitch Bradford, I thought he was going to run this. Just see if he can pick up, some, pick up a good chunk of yardage with his legs. But he tried to extend the passing opportunity. And Max Williams, yes, he did get the foot down there. And in fact, it might have been Jared Toshak, my apologies, number 81. Yes, that was Jared Toshak, sorry. Here's Bradford. And there is a penalty here in the backfield with the Rhinos. There's a false start here on the Rhinos. So that will make it second and first and 15. So Bradford now with a little bit of a task in front of him. Goes for Hansen and the ball is put a little bit behind the new receiver. So now it's second and 15 for the Rhinos. Drift left formation. Tom Hansen, the lone receiver on the, on the near sideline. Bradford, pressured, has to run and he's brought down for a loss of around about one. That is a good tackle there. And in there was number 71 for the Stingrays. I do not have a name next to that number. But that is a big play there for the Stingrays. It's a big task here for Bradford. About third and 16. Big throw here. Hansen has hauled it in. That is a big catch there by Tom Hansen. It looks to be a timeout here. Winning comes CJ. Jim James, we have seen a little bit of an offense, offensive presence. He is a former wide receiver. He did have a touchdown here a few weeks ago, I believe it was against the Ravens. So 
So while we're in the timeout here, let's just recap what has happened in this game. An early scoring route from the Rhinos has put them up 28-0, and good defensive pressure, especially from their, from their defensive line, has really, really halted the offense of Taj Borden and the Gold Coast Stingrays. So the Rhinos definitely on top here in this first semi-final on route to the Sun Bowl. So Chiem James here on this near sideline against Clark Vorher. Uh, Here's Bradford. It's going long for Hansen again. And oh, he's unable to haul this one in as well. I will note he is coming off a, a, a nasty Achilles injury that he has been maintaining over the past couple of years. Maybe just getting a little bit of the rust off. This is only his second game. He has been with the team for about half the season now. But only his second game, as said, coming off of that Achilles injury. Those can be nasty, nasty injuries to any any person, let alone an athlete, which re which obviously relies on the change of direction from their ankles. Trips formation here. Hanson, the lone receiver, again on the left. Here's Bradford. He'll run, extending the passing play. And he try and he maybe extended it just a little too long there. And that is good defensive pressure there from Blake Hatchman, the defensive back coming down in defense. And that looks like it will be half time here. So the Rhinos got us under underway with a three and out on the on the Rays defense and then went down the field and were able to put up a touchdown. And that seemed to be the pattern for most of the match so far. Three and out, touchdown, three and out, touchdown, three and out, touchdown. And the Rhinos have been capitalizing on both defense and offense. Their chances have come a plenty, but the Rays really, really need to get back into this game, need to have a good opening start to this to the second half. We'll be back soon with the second half. Don't go anywhere, but maybe check out the other game down in Logan. It is on Calling All Sports as well, but stay on the Calling All Sports channel. We will be back soon after this halftime.
Hello and welcome back for the second half of this semi-final here in Mitchelton. The Rhinos in the first half, clinical and efficient, 28-0 at the, at the closure of the first half. But they, on, de on defense, they are absolutely smothering the Stingrays and Taj Borden. He has had very, very minimal opportunities tonight. Jordan Scanlon and Xavier Huey, standouts in that first half on that defense. And a little bit of a stall on offense for the Rhinos, especially in their passing game. A few targets to Tom Hansen, a couple drops by him, but he did have a big first down conversion. And starting off the second half, the Rhinos will receive Chiam James on the return. And he will be stopped, but he won't go down f without a fight. But he has stopped at around about the 22, so the Rhinos will get us underway for the second half with Mitch Bradford and that offense. As I said, 28 nil at the end of the first half. So a big mountain to climb here for the Rays. It's not quite Everest, but it looks like it might be Kosciuszko. But first, they need to stop this runner's offense who have been a little stalled at times, but 28 points is a very good score for them. Williams in motion. Hand off to Matos to the outside. And a good run by the Portuguese men, again, of about seven or eight there. One thing I will really want to see from this, from this um, Stingray's defense is that defensive line. Louis Barisi, Sam Holloway, and Ryan Newton. Three big names on that defensive line who have been a little bit shy tonight. They really, really need to go out there and show why they are one of the best defensive line in this league. 90, 96, and 99 are their numbers. Keep an eye on them. Let's see if they can make something special happen. Two in the backfield for the Rhinos. Bradford, hand off to Wood. Wood, a big hole. A slip there from the, from the Rays. And Riley Wood, if he was not tackled there, he would have been away there for another touchdown. That is a big tackle by Trevor Talfa. And Riley Wood hobbling a little bit, but he is able to get off the side get to the sideline on his own. So potentially a little bit of trickery here. In comes Trey Fuamoli. We've seen from, from Levi Sturgis this season. He is not afraid to call these interesting interesting um Interesting packages, backfield packages. Jordan Scanlon has been a feature of those. So let's see what they go for here. And in fact, it looks like Trey Fuamoli is just replacing Riley Wood for the time being as he did hobble off with a s somewhat of an injury. So Fuamoli takes a spot. He's out on the right. Bradford out to Hanson. Good ball. And Hanson... Breaks to the outside and he fights for a first down and he's out on the sideline. A little bit of a scuffle out on that far sideline. Doesn't really amount to anything. First down for the Rhinos. They move the chains up into the Rays 40 oh, into the Rays 35 yard area. So Hansen and Schlatter on this on this near sideline like they have been for most of the night. Manos the lone back. And a timeout looks like it might be taken. In fact, there is a flag down on the in the backfield. So the Rhinos will be moved back here about five yards. Makes it a first and 15. Conversation there between Bradford and Sturgis. Bradford has had a little bit of an underwhelming year, but he's still one of the better quarterbacks in this league. 
and one of the bigger names in this league too. Wasn't part of their Sun Bowl run last year. But if they win tonight, he will definitely be there. An end around here for Max Schlatter. Gets to the outside. And a good tackle there on the, on the far sideline. That was Tristan Dent in the league defensive MVP by Osgrid Iron Focus. Arguably the best ranked cornerback in this, in this league. And but definitely one of the best defensive players as marked by Osgrid Iron Focus. So an interesting formation out on that far sideline just off, the, t off the, the shoulder of the tackle. Here's Bradford to Hanson and what an interception. That is Trevor Taufa. And that is the boost they needed. Huge opportunity now for the Rays, but what a catch. 10 out of 10 on the swan dive. Trevor Taufa. He's had a solid night for the race tonight. And now the Stingrays have an opportunity to go down the field and get some points on the board, which they desperately need to do. But first they have to get past this inc incredibly talented defen defensive unit for the Rhinos. Darby Martins blitzes off the edge. It's a run for Vernon McCalmon, and he is snuffled out there. That is Jackson Collins, the linebacker. He hasn't been too involved tonight, but that is a good solid tackle there. Only in a gain of about three. As mentioned, the Rays did put on 45 unanswered points in one half of football here a few weeks ago. Let's see if they can replicate that result today. Here's Borden. Looks to his left, goes for Major, and the pass is low and out of the reach of, of the receiver. And that will bring up third and medium. Borden just seems off pace tonight. He doesn't seem like the MVP we know him to be. Let's see he, if he can be, get back into a bit of a rhythm. Quinn and Hole on this near sideline along with Dylan Napier on trips. Kalman in the backfield. Borden. Pressure. Scanlon is there. And good push there by Borden. That is a big effort. And he goes for the first down. Is he able to get it? The ball did pop out. But I think he will be called down by contact. And it looks as though we might have a first down here for the Rays. What an effort play there by Taj Borden. Had to evade the pressure coming from the outside. Runs up the middle. And it looks as though he has picked up a first down and he has the chains are moving on that far sideline. Big result there for the Stingrays. And a timeout called. I believe that was by the Gold Coast Stingrays. First of the half. So let's just look at this again. Taj Borden looks like he's going nowhere, but just keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. Jordan Scanlon doing everything he can to stop him, but then some Rays come in support of their quarterback, and they are able to convert for a first down. So Tripp's offense here on first and 10 for the, for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Here's Borden. Opted to, opted to run over the pass. Gets rid of one. And, and off comes the helmet of the quarterback. That was Jeremy Cowles on the tackle. And we're getting a little bit heated down on the field now.
So let's see what happened here. Borden tried to extend the passing opportunity. Opted to run instead. Got rid of McCarna Garrigan and a good bump off tackle. And then Jeremy Cowles. A lot of aggression there by the returning corner. And Borden once again. First down run for their quarterback. And Borden will go off. So Kane Macken will go in there at the quarterback position. This will just be for one play. It will be a handoff to McCalmont. And off comes another helmet. We've had a few loose helmets now. And if you do lose your helmet in this in this in this sport, you do have to go off for a minimum of one play. So Borden will come back in and then we'll see Jack Lowe return after this play. Good offensive march here for the Rays. They've struggled in this in this part of the game tonight. Let's see if they can keep this going. Borden back in now. McCalmont with him. It is a handoff to McCalmont. And he moves the chains as well. A good first down run there by Vernon McCalmont. A gain of around about nine for the American. Product of Norwich University up in Vermont. Division three school. Brings some, brings some of that experience over here to Australia. Seeing an offensive rhythm here for the, for the Gold Coast Stingrays. First, first good rhythm of the night. Play action. Good pass here. Chiam James and Braden Quinn unable to pull that in. Almost there for number nine. And Chiam James just lost his man a little bit. Unable to, to get too much of a tip on the ball, but just enough that Braden Quinn was able to... Was, struggled on that catch. So that will bring up second and ten. Borden going back to that deep ball. It's been away from it for a little bit now, but maybe that rhythm has just helped him with that confidence. McCarmont, handoff, outside, goes back in, evades the man. And looks to be a pickoff of about three or four. So it'll be about third and medium for the Rhinos. Or for the for the, for the Gold Coast Stingrays and Unfortunately, Vernon McCalmont is still down after that play. And he has not moved a significant, significant amount. So, injury timeout here. So a bit of worry here for Vernon McCalmont. Hopefully he is okay. What a good drive going uh, has been has been on here for the Gold Coast Stingrays. Up into Rhinos territory now, but there is cause for concern here for Vernon McCalmont. And he is up, which is very good to see. Looks like he may need some, assist some assistance to the sideline, and he will. Took the full brunt of that pile as he went to the ground after that run. So, looks like Gab Salvo will take his place for now. Hopefully Vernon is all good. Shame to see any player go down. So as I said, Salvo was back there, along with Borden. Rhino sideline trying to get the defense defense hyped up. They've struggled a little bit on this drive. Borden pressured, runs, evades some tackles, and oh, and he is absolutely dumped there. 
I believe that's Bailey Toddle out on that far sideline, number 15. But Taj Borden, one of the best running quarterbacks in this league, one of the best runners all, all, all around. Now up over 400 yards on the year for rushing. Also ranks first in touchdowns, rushing. Has six on the season. Wouldn't be surprised if we potentially see one at the end of this drive. Salvo handoff. And he gains a bit around about four. So it looks like Vernon McCalmon is walking around on the sideline just in abouts with some of his players. So that's good to see he's able to make his his make make his way around the around the sideline on his own. Borden goes to the end zone and broken up. Bailey Toddle on Matt Major. That is great work there by the cornerback. He's had a, an outstanding season. Good coverage on the star wide receiver there for the Gold Coast Stingrays. And Bailey Toddle, as I said, continues this amazing season he's having. Big third down here. Third and eight. Here's Borden. Big play opportunity. And Myers is unable to haul it in. It was an open catch opportunity. And mistakes like that are the reason they are unable to get anything going in this game in terms of points. That's unfortunate there for Myers. Great ball by Borden. Right where it needs to be. But Myers unable to haul it in. So it looks as though they will go for this, and they will. And here comes Jaden O'Rourke. He was out last week with a sprained ankle. He is back now, his first play of the game. Let's see if Borden looks to him, looking his way, goes to the right. Borden trying to extend the play, and it is down by Braden Quinn. McCarna Garrigan in the vicinity. And on comes the offense for the Rhinos. They hold them out again, and it looks as though they might have one foot in the Sun Bowl. Love to see some more action here for Tom Hansen. He struggled a little bit in terms of catching, but his route running has been amazing. He's had he's got a great ability to be able to beat his man. One of re, one of the reasons Washburn University w wanted to pick him up out of Australia. But back now with the runners, let's see what he can do. This place for Riley Wood. Good gain. Wood first down and a lot lot more. Wood and he is eventually pushed out on the sideline, but there is a flag down around about the 35. In fact, it's around about halfway at the 45. Just a point there. If anyone is wondering why we have two 40-yard lines with only a five-yard space, we do play with 45-yard halves, not the usual 50, due to the fact that we have to fit a American football field in the space between two rugby league posts, which means we have to get rid of five yards to make the space for ends, make the proper space for end zones, so we do have a shorter field, but that is the only discrepancy on this field. Hanson on Hanson and Schneider are out on this fast on this near sideline once again. Bradford. 
Here's Wood. In fact, it was a pass to Hansen. Great overhead catch by Tom Hansen. And he looks to be a very favoured target by Mitch Bradford tonight. Let's take another look at that. I thought this went to Wood. Very, very well played play action there. And then Tom Hansen with a great over the head catch. Tackler missed his assignment there. And now the Rhinos with the opportunity. Here's Bradford. Pressured. He's just going to get it out of there. So that brings up second and ten and the Rhinos will go again. Here's Bradford. Screen pass to Schlatter. Schlatter with that speed. Schlatter with the agility. And then Denton with the tackle is fumbled. But was he down? I think the refs will call him down. And at the 15 yard line, the Rhinos make their way into the Rays end zone. And a big pick up there by Max Schlatter. Adding to his already 203 yards on the season, along with a touchdown. So the Rhinos marching their way down the field, big plays. Around about a five, or five to seven minute drive so far. Bradford to Wood. Wood trying to get to the outside, trying to get rid of his man and brings him down with him. That was Tristan Denton again. Chris Denton, sorry. Rays need to stop here if there's any chance to get back into this. Nearing the end of the third quarter. Mitch Bradford with Wood in the backfield. Bunch formation to the right side. Here's Bradford. Goes for Hansen, and that is a Rhinos touchdown. And the returning man, his second touchdown in two weeks. Number 89 for the Rhinos. Welcome back to Gridiron, Queensland. Very to hap happy to have you back, Tom Hansen, and that is why. Great play there. Over the top. Great catch radius. And now the Rhinos. 36 to nil. Sorry, 35 to nil. In fact, it will be 35 nil if Tom Fenwick is able to put this through, which he has been successful on all attempts. And this one is broken up. Faulty hold there by Tompkins. And there is a little bit of a scuffle down on the field now. Stingrays may be getting a little frustrated now. It stays a 34 nil game here in Mitchelton. The Rays look like they are on track to not progress, but the Rhinos certainly have the train moving at light speed here. 34 nil. So Tom Fenwick with the kickoff now. Unable to make that extra point, keeping it at a 34-0 game. Hopefully you're enjoying Saturday Night Football so far here for Mitchelton on Calling All Sports YouTube. 
and a towering kickoff goes down into the corner. Gab Salvo will have a big job to, here to do. And Gab Salvo breaks a few. Oh, there's a fumble. The Rhinos have recovered. And that looks like it's Xavier Savellino, number 98 for the Rhinos. He is back from injury. One of the key parts of their defense last year on the on route to Super on on route to the Sun Bowl. And he is back here on special teams with a massive play. And now the Rhinos can put the, put a nail in the coffin and book their ticket to this year's Sun Bowl. Gabe Salvo had a good return up until the po point where he fumbled it. He's been good at returning tonight, but just the Rhinos pressure there just mounting up. Jared Toshak out on that far sideline. Pass here, Hansen. Takes a man with him for a couple yards, and they're inside the five. First and goal, Rhinos. Good pass there from Mitch Bradford. There was a flag in the end zone. Looked to be a delay of game on the Rhinos. Looks as though the, the play clocks behind each end zone aren't working tonight, so we are going off the ref's call. The players don't have a reference to that play clock, so they are at a slight disadvantage. Sometimes technology just doesn't work the way you want it to, but that is but that is all good. We shall just continue proceedings here. In fact, it is actually a timeout called by the Rhinos just prior to that delay of game call. So they'll retain the inside five position. Rhinos with first and goal here at the five. I think this is it for the Rays. They need to stop them here. Cannot let it touch down in. And I think if they do, it's curtains. Bradford. Oh, what a play there. Max Schlatter looks like he's got the outside. Diving for it. And he is down at the one. And here we go. This is the offensive play calling that I was uh, that I mentioned earlier. In comes some, some of the big defensive players. Scanlon. Huey, Lowe, and Trask. And along with them is Jack Burberry as well, number 57. And that is the end of the third quarter. So the players will make their way down to the other end of the field to begin the fourth. And at the moment, it looks like this will be the last quarter of the Gold Coast Stingray season. So this quarter hasn't seen too much scoring, the, only the lone touchdown without the extra point conversion from Tom Fenwick. But it was a great, great catch by Tom Hansom in the back of the end zone. Slight bobble, but was able to haul it in for the score. His second touchdown on return to the Rhinos after some time with, out with an Achilles injury and also over in Kansas with Washburn University. Just a score update from Logan. The Ravens are 49 to nil up over the Morton Bay Raptors. So it looks like they are also on their way to a Sun Bowl. So it seems as though we will have the same matchup back to back in the Sun Bowl. 
Ravens, Rhinos. Next week, WJ Scott Park in the south of Brisbane at Holland Park. So here's this interesting formation. Scanlon under center. And there was a fumble. And it looks like, like the, the race have been able to return this. In fact, there is a flag down on the field. So, And Louis Barisi, out of frustration, has kicked the football away. So there might be a little more retribution here for the Rays. So a few things to look over here. Rano's bringing in that jumbo package that, Luke, uh, that Levi Sturges spoke about to me uh, before the game. He's used it a few times this season. Says he wants to bring unique and aggressive play calling over, over here to Australia. Didn't go to plan there, but they will get a flag and no score attempt for the, ra for the Stingrays. So we might see a call here. So just waiting for a confirmation of what the outcome of this is. So no ejection for Louis Barisi. A little unsure of what happened there, but the Rhinos are now down at the one. So here's this formation again. Scanlon out to the right, just under the, under the right guard. And a handoff to Matos, and he will be stuffed. Good defense there by the Stingrays. One of the rare opportunities that the Rays defense has had an opportunity, uh, 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 an impact on a play tonight, which is unfortunate because they are such a talented group. Was really hoping to see them have more of an impact on this game, but the the Rhinos offensive line has done a very very good job tonight. Change of personnel on the offensive line in comes Taniela Kafusi, number 58. So they'll stick with this formation. Talis Trask, extra lineman. And they'll push, and it looks as though they're in, but there is a flag down on the field. I think that was Jack Lowe with the football. So it looks like they'll move away from this from this unique unique formation and they'll go back to their usual wide receiver look. Let's just have a look at what happened here. Looks like that was Jacob Estevez there and the flag flew after the touchdown. Not too sure what the call was on the field by the referee. Wasn't able to get a quite, quite a good hearing on that. But now Mitch Bradford comes back in with a normal, with a more familiar offensive lineup. Here's Bradford, gets a snap, looks out wide, that is Fenwick, and Vorher is able to get that out of there, and that will bring up fourth down for the Rhinos. And they will bring out the field goal unit with Tom Fenwick. Let's see if they can make up for their lost opportunity with that last PAT. So 
So Tompkins will hold. Fenwick will make the kick. And there is a flag on the field. Fenwick's kick is good for the meantime. So it looked as though there was some type of false start there by the Rays' defense. Penalties declined. The, the Rhinos have an extra three points on the scoreboard. It is a 37-point game. So now the Rays will have an opportunity to return this. Myers and Salvo back to take the kick. Here's Fenwick. Line drive kick, and it will be a touchback. No opportunity to return for Salvo. So Borden's offense will have to start from the 20-yard line. Fenwick has been very, very good in kickoffs tonight and also kicking duties. Has not been used as a receiver tonight due to a bit of an injury uh, lingering on his knee. but his kicking tonight has been excellent. Myers, Field, oh no, Quinn, sorry, and Napier out on this near sideline. Borden, empty backfield. Long ball opportunity here. A little bit of a push there. I thought I saw, and Matt Major is unable to get the hole in the football. Jeremy Cowles there on the coverage. So the Rays now, second and ten. Empty backfield for Borden. And it's at the feet of Myers. Borden has just lacked that MVP touch tonight. It's unfortunate. And now they'll, they'll bring in Salvo for a potential run opportunity. It is third and ten for the Rays. About halfway through this fourth quarter now that the Rhinos have put 35 points on the raise for no return score. The clock will be running now, despite the fact that in normal ruling, the clock will stop for an incomplete, pla incomplete pass or an out-of-bounds tackle. But due to the rules over here in, in, Amer in Australia, the clock will continue to run. Here's Borden. He rolls out to his right. Nothing on. And just has to go down. And Xavier Huey dumps him down there. Good tackle by the American. And Borden looks discontent with how things have turned out tonight. So the Rays will have to punt. James and Schlatter back there on the turn. Hey. 
So here's Kane Mackin for the punt. And flags fly for an offside call, which should be on the Rhinos. In fact, it was on the Stingray, so they will be moved back even further. So more of a task here for Mackin. But he has a good leg, which has been shown tonight. <laughs> Mackin, that's a solid punt there. Chim James will just let it bounce out of bounds. And that was around about 35 yard line. So a solid punt there by, by Mackin. Flips the field, but out comes an offense which has been pretty much on the money tonight. So, getting a little bit towards the end of this game now. The Rhinos have pretty much booked their spot in next week's Sun Bowl. Here's Bradford. Hand off to Matos, and Matos is eventually dragged down. Rhino sideline calling for a horse collar but they won't get a flag. Good run there by the Portuguese man. As I said, a solid acquisition for this Rhinos offense, not just for the impact it has on Riley Wood, but also Carlos Matos himself, bringing some of that international pedigree, which brings a unique aspect to any offense or defense around this league. Here's Bradford. A little bit of a late handoff there. There is a flag on the far sideline and in the backfield. Mandos has picked up a first down and a lot more, but they might be brought back here. So the Rhinos will be brought back. That gain from Carlos Matos is erased. And instead of picking up 20, they are brought back about five. So about second and 12 from the Rhinos' 34-yard line. Bradford, Schlatter, and there is a drop there by the slot man, unfortunate there, but in coverage there was Jacob Smith, the defensive back coming downhill. So third and 12 now. So back with this trips formation that the Rhinos like to run. Schlatter the slot man. Taylor and Williams. Now look for Williams. And getting in between the two levels of defense there was Mitch Bradford on a great pass and Max Williams picks up the first down on picks up the first down after the third down. Great run there by Max Williams. Route run there. And a great ball placed right where it needed to go by Mitch Bradford, who's been solid tonight.
Bradford. And that is Hansen who hauls it in despite a couple tip-ons. But he is able to make the catch and the Rhinos continue their march into, into race territory. First down, Brisbane. Bradford in the shotgun, spread offense, hand off to Matos, here's Carlos Matos, to the outside, here goes the Portuguese man, and there's a little bit of a scuffle on the far, on this near side, that's Taylor and Vorher. And we have a player down for the for the Gold Coast Stingrays, it looks like it might be Lua Barisi. So we'll have an injury timeout here. A few injuries in this game. Vernon McCalmont. Saw him walking around on the sideline earlier, so he seems like he's okay. Now, I believe that is Louis Barisi down around midfield. So players will take a knee out of respect for their fellow player. And it is number 90 Barisi, but he's able to get up. And it looks like he will be able to make his way off the field under his own power. And he will, but he will need to take minimum of one play out of the field after an injury timeout per the ruling. So first and 10 here. We're at about 15 yards out from the Rays end zone. Mitch Bradford and his offense look to close this game out now. Bradford drops back, looks to his left. Schlatter, great ball. And it will be second and about three for the Rhinos to set up a first and goal. So they need to hurry up here, the Rhinos. Bradford. Looking in a great catch. Max Williams, touchdown Rhinos. And that is a way to put a statement on the Sun Bowl opportunity here for the Rhinos. That makes it 43-0 with a kick to come here for Tom Fenwick. Not just a semi-final victory here tonight for the Rhinos, but a statement victory going into the Sun Bowl. They'll need to be at their very best to beat the Ravens, who they almost knocked off here about a month ago. But the question is, can they go all the way? And Fenwick's kick is almost blocked, but it is through for the extra point. That makes it a 44-0 game.
So Tom Fenwick on the kickoff in the final stages of this match. Good kickoff by Fenwick. Salvo receives. And a good block there, a trip up. And Gab Salvo will be eventually pulled down. And it looks like a little bit of a hobble here for Jara Fuemolo. Fuemoli, sorry. Looking down on the sideline, it looks like Makana Garrigan might be out with a bit of a shoulder issue. Looks to have some ice on that, just above that right shoulder. But it looks like no need for, for him to risk any further injury. Here's Borden. And he will be taking down Scanlon and Jack Lowe. This defense tonight has been the best they have been all season. What a game they have played. Kept one of the most high-powered high offenses in the league to nil. This is a statement victory for the Rhinos heading into next week. Here's Borden. Salvo handoff. Lyman fell down in front of him. That was Jesse Sharp. And he's unable to get any further. A little bit of a scuffle down there on the ground. And as the weather starts to cool down, it seems like we might be cooling down a little bit here on the field as the game nears closer to the final whistle. But here's Taj Borden, third and 13. Long ball, Major with a great catch. Jeremy Cowles unable to cover him. And there is a flag down. And Matt Major has scored the touchdown. But there might be a little bit of retribution here to pay for the raise. And also coming in was was number 21, Bailey Myers trying to catch the flag that was thrown by the referee. So there might be a little bit of an interesting call here to make for the refs. Let's see what they say. So instead they'll bring it back from the point of the catch before Matt Major made the signal that got him penalized. So here's Borden and a good play and there is a flag down for pass interference. That was Harrison Roden on Braden Quinn. And despite no catch or no touchdown, Braden Quinn comes out on top. So we will move the change up further in to Rana's territory.
Now Borden. Salvo. In fact, it is Borden still with it. Oh, and he is smacked out of bounds there. Jack Low. The helmet is off again for Taj Borden. The Rhinos are not going to stop this rampage. What a hit there by number 43. Followed Borden all the way out to the sideline. He's the first man to meet him. In fact, it wasn't it wasn't Jack Lowe, it was actually Jeremy Cowles. So here's Kane Mackin back in after Taj Borden's helmet did come off. And Mackin will take it up the gut. And he'll be stuffed there eventually for maybe a pick of a of couple. Third down for the race. Trying to get a little bit of offense going at the back end of this game. Here's Borden. Pressured by Darby Martins. Borden will get in for the touchdown. So the Rays will not will not go home without without a score. Runners unable to hold them to nil. Good touchdown run there by Taj Borden. Pressure out there by Darby Martins but the quarterback is, un is able to get into the end zone just in that far corner. 44-6 with the kick to come. In fact, it looks like they will be going for two instead. So Borden out there with Gal Gabe, uh, Gab Salvo in the backfield. Borden throws over the middle and that is caught. That is number 10, Arian Sabert. His first real involvement of tonight's match for the two-point conversion, 44 to eight. So coming up is the Rays kickoff. Come from Kane from Kane Mackin, number fifty-six. Showed a good showing of the boot tonight. And <laughs> they put the the kicking tee five yards too close to the Rays end zone, so they'll just bring it up now. And Mackin will have to reset his kicking stance. So here's the kickoff. No onside attempt. Goes right down to Wood. And now Wood will return it. Here's Wood. Great run, Riley Wood. And he's eventually brought down. And there will be flags flying. There was a horse collar in there, and Riley Wood is very excited about that. Great return. And then on the back of that, flags flying for the tackling. Yep, that is a fair call. It's on 35. Jacob Smith, the defensive back. So 
So I was unable to hear the ref, but it looked as though one of the penalties on the player was declined. In fact, it looks as though those fouls offset. There was holding by the Rhinos. So we'll actually have a re-kick due to those penalties. So here's Kane Mackin on the retry of the kick. No trickery this time. Instead it goes to Chiam James. Good catch. And a good return by number 23. Up just before the 30 yard line of the Rhinos. And now we'll see the introduction of Simon Tompkins. No need to risk any injury to Mitch Bradford. So in comes Simon Tompkins, the backup quarterback. He has had to play a couple games with Mitch Bradford missing an injury. And Carlos Maddles with a great run there, a gain of about 15. And a flag does fly around the 40-yard line. Just an on Simon Tompkins. He has had a good season when he has had to come in. 30, um, 16 completions of 37 passes, 275 yards, along with two touchdowns, but two interceptions as well. Commendable uh, effort from number seven. And he will come in here now at the back end of this game where they have certainly closed out. So it looks as though the Rhinos will be moved back for a penalty in a fraction of 10 yards now. So it makes it first and 20. Tompkins drops back and a good ball out to Lockie Taylor. Trying to get away from Clark Vaughan. He fumbles the football. Good tackle there. And a little bit of extras there. That's Alexander Dunster. Squaring up there against number 28. That is Luce, Lucas Allfrank. Had a few good tackles at the, the commencement of this match, but haven't called his name as much as I thought I would tonight. Star linebacker for the, Ra for the, Raven, uh, for the Rays. And that is the last play of the game. The Rhinos move on. That is the end of the Gold Coast Stingray season. But what a showing tonight. The Brisbane Rhinos will go to, su to the Sun Bowl next weekend in Holland Park. And the Rays, after a solid season, are unable to move on. The full-time score for Mitchelton, 44-8. So just a quick summary of the game. Rhinos, effective scoring, but the real standout tonight has been their defense. We're unable, didn't let Taj Borden get much going. Little, only little moments there for the quarterback, the league MVP. And this defense looks incredibly lethal. And it will be very interesting to see how their matchup will go next week. 
and next week it looks as though they will be playing the Raptors or the, uh, the Ravens who have won their game in Logan against the Morden Bay Raptors 84-0 so next weekend Holland Park 6.30 do not miss it on Calling All Sports or make your way down to the south side of Brisbane Bayside Ravens the defending back-to-back-to-back -back -back champs up against the Rhinos a repeat of last year the Rhinos will go into this knowing that they can all that they can beat the top teams and almost beat the Ravens here a few weeks ago and tonight was a great statement showing that they can win big against the best thank you everyone for tuning in I hope you did enjoy the game tonight Ho join us next week as I said on Calling All Sports or see if you can make your way down to the game. My name is Sam. Thank you for everyone once again for joining and I will see you next time.